Greetings, motherfuckers, and welcome to this rather legendary uh, episode of 101 Facts. You're too liberal with the word legendary. Oh yes, you've been asking for it for a long time, and here we are finally doing it, because all of our plans for content around stuff coming out has stopped because nothing's coming out anymore. We're off to the Big Apple once again to learn about a sitcom all about a group of friends living their lives in the city that never sleeps. No, not that one. Or that one. Oh, because there's so many. No, we're talking about how I met your mother. But which character has kissed every main character? Just how controversial was that ending? And how many suits does Barney own? Because that man could probably pay my mortgage with that closet. If I had one, which I don't, because I live in London and I'm under 60. Two out of three of those questions are going to be answered, so suit up, head down to McLaren's bar and learn 101 facts all about how I met your father. I mean, 101 facts about how I met your mother. It's going to be legend... wait for it... number one... Jerry. Legendary. For those of you who have no idea what I'm talking about, How I Met Your Mother was an American sitcom that ran on CBS from 2005 until 2014. It takes place in the future. Oh. With our protagonist explaining to his kids in the most long-winded way imaginable how he met their mother. Oh, that's why it's called that. Number two. That protagonist is Mr. Theodore Evelyn Mosby, or simply Ted. Born in Ohio, just like his actor Josh Radner, and now living in the Big Apple, Ted recounts how he desperately searched for his soulmate after his best friend Lillian Marshall got engaged. Number three. And in his search for the one, he meets Miss Robin Shabatsky, played by Kobe Smulders. Yep, that's Maria Hill from the Avengers, my nerds. But sans Nick Fury, Robin is a reporter for Metro News 1 and the apple of Ted's eye throughout the series. Number four. Robin is a celebrity in the How I Met Your Mother world, trust me we'll be getting into that, which is fitting really because the name Robin sort of means bright fame in Old Germanic. She's also Canadian and from Vancouver. I want to go to there. Just like Smulders, although originally she was meant to be from Toronto. Number five. Ted's best friend, Marshall Erickson, is played by Jason Siegel, and his girlfriend slash wife slash fiance, not in that order obviously, is Lily Aldrin, played by Alison Hannigan. These two TV legends you might recognise from a plethora of shows and movies that we shan't list here because it'll take too long and you'll have Google. Number six. Ted's other best friend is Barney. No, not the dinosaur, though I'd love to see that crossover, but Barney Stinson. We're not really sure what his job is, although we do know he loves money, women and suits. He's played by Neil Patrick Harris, who's an LGBT superstar, but we'll talk about that later on. Number seven. What you might not know about the lovable Barney is that his name is inspired by James McElroy's novel and 1990s neo noir movie, LA Confidential, in which there's a throwaway mention of a hospital orderly and drug dealer called, you guessed it, Alan. Oh no, sorry, Barney Stinson. Number eight. Bob Saget narrates his future Ted. The reason why creators Thomas and Bayes wanted to have a different voice for future Ted was so that viewers would understand that Ted went through a transformative journey and isn't the same person he used to be. I mean, sure guys, if you say so. You saw the ending, right? Number nine. The show is loosely based on the lives of the writers and creators of the show, Carter Bayes and Craig Thomas, and how they too were best friends at Wesleyan College, and how they lived in the same apartment with Thomas's girlfriend, now wife, Rebecca. Carter Bayes turned into Ted, Craig Thomas into Marshall, and Rebecca into Lily. Number ten. The stories in the show also mirror some of the real-life antics of the threesome, such as Ted moping about being single all the damn time. As well as inviting someone to a wedding without realising they didn't have a plus one, and calling Rebecca and Lily a Grinch during a brief breakup. Well, they say you should write what you know. Number 11. <laughs> Craig Thomas's wife Rebecca said that she would only agree to the character of Lily being based on her if Alison Hannigan played her. Wow, really lucky she said yes then, really. Number 12. Just in case they weren't involved enough already, the theme song to the show is Hey Beautiful by The Solids, which just happens to be Thomas and Bay's band. Write the theme tune, sing the theme tune. Nice little early noughties British reference for you there. Number 13. You'll notice that this show uses a laugh track, so we should know when to laugh. Should do that with jokes really, but there we are. What's different about this laugh track though, is that it's not filmed live with the show. In fact, they shoot the show first, edit it together, and then show it to the audience and record their laughter. Number 14. This method of recording is actually pretty rare and has been present since the pilot. This is because there are too many scenes and sets, and shoots were done over multiple days. Number 15. The entire show could have been cast very differently from the dynamic group that we know and love. Scott Foley of Scrubs fame was originally offered the role of Ted, and superstar Jennifer Love Hewitt was offered the role of Robin, but turned it down to star in The Ghost Whisperer. It's an interesting choice, Jennifer. Number 16. Another surprising auditionee was Mr. Jim Parsons, who originally auditioned for Barney. But obviously lost out to Neil Patrick Harris because the physical comedy aspects they were looking for were more in line with him. 
Parsons certainly didn't miss out though, being cast as Sheldon in the Big Bang Theory a year later and becoming the highest paid TV actor in the world until the show ended, thankfully, in 2019. Number 17. NPH really threw himself into the role of Barney during his audition, which included the pilot's laser tag scene where he dive rolls. During the audition, he misjudged the size of the room and knocked himself out doing said role. Number 18. Apparently, Thomas and Bates were huge fans of the teen comedy show Freaks and Geeks, which launched the career of Mr. Jason Siegel and made him the first choice to play Marshall in How I Met Your Mother. Number 19. Jason Siegel is actually as old as his older brother, by which I mean his character is. I could have worded that better. He's the same age as Robert Michael Ryan, who plays his brother Marvin, and a year older than Ned Rolsma, who plays Marcus. Marshall is meant to be the youngest brother, bear in mind. Number 20. T T. The most iconic place in the series is the legendary bar McLaren's, which was modelled on a real NYC pub called McGee's, where Bays and Thomas used to hang out during their time writing for The Late Show with David Letterman back in the 1990s. Number 21. McGee's decided to capitalise on this connection, and who wouldn't, by creating How I Met Your Mother cocktails, including the Robin Sparkles, Daddy's Home, ugh, and the Pineapple Incident, as well as hosting show-themed quiz nights during its run. Number 22. The bar was named after assistant producer Carl McLaren, who got promoted to associate producer after two seasons. Just to add to this nifty little fact, they also called the barman Brian. No, not Brian, Carl, obviously. Number 23. Speaking of Carl, his actor, Joe Neves, was initially cast as a police officer in the original pilot, but after the scene got cut, he got given the bit part of Carl the bartender. This bit part lasted for nine years. Number 24. In the pilot, we're introduced to the now infamous line, Have you met Ted? Nailed it. This was invented by Letterman co-head writer Justin Stangl, who apparently used this line, Have you met Carter? to get girls for Carter Bays. Number 25. In episode 4, we meet Ted's ex, Natalie, who he dumps on her birthday twice. Jeez, Ted, come on, man. But Natalie's actress, Anne Dudek, also appeared in the final season of the fellow Manhattan sitcom Friends as Mike's girlfriend who also gets dumped on her birthday. Oh, Annie, are you okay? Hey, that could be a song. Number 26. A small contradiction lies in Robin's character. In the season 1 episode Slutty Pumpkin, she laments she's never played on a sports team. However, later in that season, in Best Prom Ever, she states she never went to prom because the field hockey nationals were always in spring. Hmm. Number 27. And before you go thinking, oh, that's just because she's a fan, Sam. It isn't, because in the season 4 episode Happily Ever After, we see a flashback of her playing hockey. So it's either a plot hole, or she's a liar. Number 28. Episode 7 of Season 1 sees the debut of the Cockamouse. Not what you were expecting, huh? Apparently it was inspired by a real-life creature that producer Courtney Kang encountered and to this day still has not identified. And yes, it really did fly. Number 29. When re-watching the show in Season 1 Episode 9 entitled Belly Full of Turkey, Ted tells the story of how he met a stripper called Tracy and jokes with his kids that that's how he met their mother. Of course, in Season 8 we find out the mother's name is Tracy, so this is a great little reference or a big coincidence when going back to the beginning. Number 30. In Season 1 Episode 21, Milk, just got flashbacks to Jason Derulo shouting milk and cat. Show writers and creators Thomas and Bays make a guest appearance as the paramedic actors that arrive as Barney tries to pull off a frankly far too elaborate ploy. Though I guess it worked, so who's the real winner here? Number 31. Ted's future kids, Penny and Luke, played by Lindsay Fonseca and David Henry, filmed all their scenes in season 1 because the producers wanted everything to be filmed before Henry started puberty and before they both grew up too much. This means the kids knew the ending for 9 years. Number 32. Both kids had to sign a confidentiality agreement, but said by the time the ending came, they'd pretty much forgotten what it was anyway. That didn't stop other people badgering the pair about what happens though, including their friends and family, and according to Henri, people in bars trying to get him drunk to spill the beans. Hopefully not when he was, you know, a kid. Because that's illegal. Drinking, not spilling beans. Number 33. While the kids and creators Thomas and Bays were the only ones who knew the ending, Ted and Lily actors Radner and Hannigan found out early that the mother would die in the end. Hannigan said, I didn't know who the mother was going to be, but I did know the reason he was telling these stories was because she passed away, which was very sweet. Number 34. Another interesting tidbit about Lindsay Fonseca is that in real life, she's only 18 months younger than the actress who played her mother, Christina Milotti. Now, I'm not great at baby maths, but I don't think that would work in real life. Ah, oh, the magic of Hollywood. Number 35. If the show wasn't picked up after its original 13 episode order, the mother was going to be Ted's season 1 girlfriend Victoria, played by Ashley Williams, who was introduced in the 13th episode of that season, called Drumroll Please. 
number 36. Thomas and Baze both said in a Reddit AMA it was hard to say goodbye to Victoria, she and Ted had such chemistry, and said she was the hardest of Ted's girlfriends to write off the show. Which is probably why she came back in season 8. That's a spoiler, but if you're concerned about spoilers watching this, I, I mean, I don't really have much sympathy. Number 37. This episode also features a montage with photos of married couples. The second picture in this is of Craig Thomas and his wife Rebecca, who Marshall and Lily are based on. Number 38. If you discount Robin, as she's one of the main cast, then the girlfriend of Ted that's been in the most episodes would be Victoria, who is in 16 episodes overall. She really was the best one. Number 39. Speaking of her being the best, according to an Entertainment Weekly poll in 2011, Victoria was the fan's favourite girlfriend. The least favourite girlfriend was... Zoe. I'm not sure how it wasn't the woman who left Ted at the altar, but okay. Number 40. All of the husbands of the cast guest star in the show. Hannigan's husband, Alexis Denisov, plays news anchor Sandy Rivers in 10 episodes. Smulders' husband, Taran Killam, plays Gary Blauman. And Harris's husband, David Butker, portrayed Lily's high school boyfriend, Scooter. Keeping it in the family. Nepotism. Number 41. In episode 21 of season 1, Lily tells Ted to swear on his future kids, and he swears on Luke and Leia, who are, of course, the main characters in the iconic Star Wars original trilogy. Later in the series, we actually find out that Ted's kids are called Penny, because of her parents' love of koi collecting, and Luke. One out of two ain't bad, Ted. The meaning of life. Season 2, episode 9 sees the debut of the slap bet. The idea of the slap bet between Barney and Marshall originated from Carter Bays, who used to make slap bets with his high school friends. We couldn't even have Pokemon cards at my school, let alone slap bets. Number 43. As we all know, Ted and Robin finally started dating for the first time in season 2. What you'll also know is that Robin had to give away her five dogs because Ted threw a hissy fit about them being gifts from ex-boyfriends. But what you may not know is that Ted's actor Josh Radner is very allergic to dogs, which is why they had to be written out, because having paramedics on standby for every scene in Robin's apartment was a little bit of a health hazard. Number 44. In the season 2 finale, Something Blue, the proposal you see when Robin finds the ring in the champagne is an actual real-life proposal. Timothy Russo asks Jane and Rugen to marry him for realties with the help of his brother's friend, who was a writer on the show. Luckily, Rugen said yes, because can you imagine how awkward it would have been on set if she didn't? Number 45. In Brunch, Ted calls Barney out on the fact that all of his made-up statistics contain the numbers 8 and 3, or 83. Once you know this, it's literally impossible not to notice it all the time. Number 46. Sarah Chalk, you might recognise as Dr. Elliot Reed from Scrubs, played Stella the Dermatologist, who almost marries Ted in season 4. Anyway, she received the call to first appear on the show at short notice and was told to bring a lab coat with her. Chalk claims that the coat she used was actually the same one from Scrubs, but with a pocket protector over the Dr. Elliot Reed name tag. Number 47. Sarah Chalk wasn't the first choice to play Stella, though. Alicia Silverstone of Clueless fame was in talks by the dermatologist, but her representatives withdrew her after finding out who would be her co-star, which brings us to... Number 48. Who is it? <laughs> it's Brittany Bench. Yes, the pop princess played Stella's receptionist, Abby. Neil Patrick Harris believed that getting Spears involved would be selling out the show, but her appearance and the resurgence in views that followed is often credited with saving it. Number 49. Bob Odenkirk, of Saul in Breaking Bad fame, was shooting on How I Met Your Mother when a bit of an issue came up on the Breaking Bad set. They needed a character to deliver some exposition, but they couldn't call Saul. So instead, they invented the character of Mike, who became a legend in the world of Breaking Bad, all thanks to How I Met Your Mother. Number 50. During the filming of the third season, Kobe Smulders was diagnosed with ovarian cancer at the age of just 25. She battled the disease and had several surgeries, but was declared to be in remission two years later. Number 51. Season 4, episode 11 sees Robin getting homesick and spending time with Marshall in a Minnesota-themed bar. While Robin is telling a story, there's a woman in the background. That's not all, by the way. She's wearing a jersey with the name Smulders on the back. It just happens to be the surname of Kobe Smulders, who plays Robin. Yeah, that's right. All the facts up here. Number 52. Those eagle-eyed among you may have noticed that Lily was absent for the last few episodes of season 4. That's because actress Alison Hannigan was pregnant throughout the majority of the season and had her baby around the time the episode was being made. Number 53. That means Alison Hannigan is the only main character of the five to not have been in every episode. But you might have noticed her pregnancy bump during season 4 episode 14 during a hot dog eating contest. I assume she was just bloated. Number 54. Not only was Hannigan pregnant, but so was Kobe Smulders at the same time. The ladies were sat down for a lot of this season, not only for rest, but to hide their bumps. Classic TV magic. Number 55. Let's talk about Robin Sparkles. 
Did you know her real life inspiration was Alanis Morissette? Did you? Well, you do now. Oh, and her TV co host was Jessica Glitter, played by none other than Pussycat Doll Nicole Scherzinger. Number 56. Robin's ex Simon, who also featured in the Sand Castles in the Sand video, is played by James Vanderbeek of Dawson's Creek fame. He has a band called the Foreskins. Oh, God. And their song Murder Train is played throughout the series, usually when the main characters get into fights. Number 57. Back to the sparkly babe, her song Let's Go to the Mall is also featured in the real life game Just Dance 3. Just as well they didn't pick the Robin Dagger song PS I Love You. That would be an interesting dance. Number 58. According to a Reddit AMA with Baze and Thomas, the Robin Sparkles shoots were usually the most challenging. They took an extra day of filming and usually had poor Kobe Smulders dancing for 16 hours. Number 59. A main player we haven't mentioned yet is Pamela Fryman. She directed 196 out of the 208 episodes of the show. One of the few episodes she didn't was the 99th episode. This was so she could focus on the 100th special, but our old pal Neil Patrick Harris directed that 99th episode in her absence. Number 60. In season 6's bad news, Jason Siegel didn't know that his on-screen father was going to die. So when Alison Hannigan tells him his father didn't make it, Siegel's reacting genuinely to that news. Number 61. That episode also featured a subtle countdown from 50 to 1, 1 being the show's climax. Give it a watch back and see if you can find all the numbers hidden in the background. It might make the pain of the last scene somewhat bearable. Number 62. In season 8, we finally meet the mother. The show's casting director, Marisa Ross, had actually been talking about Kristen Malotti to play Tracy for two whole years before she was cast. Number 63. Before the producers made the final decision though, they made Malotti and Alison Hannigan stand beside each other because they were scared they might look too similar. I'm not sure what the worry is there, but sure. Nintendo 64. In that now famous scene where we see the mother for the first time, the train platform is filled with extras. These extras are all members of the How I Met Your Mother crew and staff, which is pretty sweet for all involved. Number 65. The show almost ended at season 8, and Jason Siegel was one of the main reasons for it. Wanting to focus on his movie career, Siegel was the last person to be convinced at the very last minute to sign on for the final season. Number 66. Aside from the controversial ending, perhaps the biggest blowback the show received was in Slap's giving free slapointment at Slapmara. This saw several main characters dress and play Asian individuals. Riskier choice than Ted's red cowboy boots. Number 67. After the show was labelled as hashtag how I met your racism on Twitter, the show's creators issued an apology, claiming they were only trying to make silly and unabashedly immature homages to kung fu movies, a genre we've always loved. Number 68. Okay. Time to talk about that finale. It's controversial to say the least and was so hated by fans that a petition was made to change the ending. Eventually, a DVD extra was added with an alternate ending which saw Tracy live and Ted getting his happy... Uh, ending. But what do you think? Do you love the original ending or hate it? Let us know in our fancy YouTube poll. Number 69. Legendary. A spin-off show, How I Met Your Dad, was announced all the way back in 2013. It had some pretty big names attached to the project too, including Greta Gerwig and Meg Ryan. However, when the show creators Craig Thomas and Carter Bays refused to reshoot the pilot, TBS passed on the show. That was in 2014. Number 70. Two further attempts at a spin-off with the title How I Met Your Father were attempted by Fox between 2016 and 2017, but these also failed. They even starred Greta Gerwig too. Number 71. The cast had a tradition where they would all meet outside of the table read room and walk in together. Jason Siegel suggested it so they could get there early and eat the free breakfast provided. Apparently on the final table read, the gang started crying before they even got in the room. Ah. Number 72. The infamous pineapple incident that had fans reeling at the mystery was solved in a DVD deleted scene. It's revealed that the captain followed an old naval tradition of leaving a pineapple outside his house as a symbol of hospitality, which drunk Ted found hilarious. I'm sorry I didn't think Teddy Boy here might have a kleptomaniac streak. Number 73. There's a lot of guest actors on this show. A lot. Here's some of the most notable ones. Enrique Iglesias, Katy Perry, Brian frickin' Heisenberg, Cranston, Bob Barker, Tim Gunn, Heidi Klum, Jennifer Lopez, J-Lo from The Block, Katie Holmes, Maury Povich, Alex Trebek, Weird Al Yankovic, Carrie Underwood, Lin-Manuel Miranda, and the entirety of Boys to Men, Kim Kardashian, and Martin Short. Whew. Number 74. The clock in Marshall and Ted's apartment is permanently set to 420, except for one episode where it's set to 1410. Time to eat those sandwiches, dudes. Number 75. There are a total of 13 interventions in the show. 
These include Barney's Magic Tricks, Liddy's British Accent, Marshall's Charts, Ted marrying Stella too soon, Robin's Spray Tan Obsession, and of course the group intervention about having too many interventions. Number 76. Alison Hannigan is the only actor in the main five to have shared an on-screen kiss with all the other lead characters in the group, even though the kiss with Ted was a mistaken memory and the kiss with Barney was Barney's imagination. Number 77. Every character except Lily has a musical number, partly because Alison Hannigan hates singing. Ted has Super Date in Season 5, Episode 17, Marshall had Marshall vs. The Machine in Season 6, Episode 4, Robin in every Robin Sparkles and Daggers video, and Barney has Nothing Suits Me Like a Suit in the 100th episode Girls vs. Suits. Number 78. Not only did it have 75 dancers being choreographed by Glee's Zach Woodley and had a 50-piece orchestra, but the song actually hit the charts in four different countries, including number three in Austria, of all places. Number 79. The show was nominated for 72 awards in total, winning 18. This includes 28 Primetime Emmys and two People's Choice Awards for Alison Hannigan and Neil Patrick Harris for Favourite TV Comedy Actress and Actor, respectively. Number 80. Now, what's the most viewed episode of the entire series? Take a, just a, you know, just a wild guess. That's right, it was that darn gone controversial finale in 2014 with 12.9 million viewers. Number 81. Before then, their most watched episode came all the way back in 2005, during the first season. The pineapple incident hit 12.3 million viewers, so ultimately the show went out on top, just like how I want to go. Number 82. As with most successful TV shows, How I Met Your Mother wound up with a foreign adaptation. Where is this, you ask? Russia! It only ran for two seasons, but it looks mental. Number 83. Conan O'Brien won a charity auction to be in an episode. Baze and Thomas wanted to give the late night talk show host a bigger part in the episode, but O'Brien decided it would be funnier and more realistic if he was just an extra. Number 84. One of the most iconic props in the show is the blue French horn. Well, if you were wondering what happened to it, Josh Radner kept it after filming Wrapped. Baze, Thomas and Pamela Fryman kept the iconic yellow umbrellas and... Number 85. In case you were wondering, the other cast members ceremoniously nicked stuff too. Neil Patrick Harris took the tabletop of their bar table and Barney's playbook. Hannigan acquired the little British phone booth. But Smulders got Robin Sparkle's denim jacket, so that's the best prize here, really. Number 86. Ranjit is the only recurring character to appear in all nine seasons. In The Goat, he yells at Barney and Farty for sleeping with Robin. Roughly translated, he says, Inhuman traitor, non-friend, if she was my ex-girlfriend, I would put my hands around your neck. Wow, Ranjit, brutal. Number 87. Liebenslangische Sorsatz is not a real word. I deserve a medal for saying that correctly. But it does have elements of the real German language. Lieben means life, lang means long, Schicksal means fate or destiny, and Schatz means treasure or darling. So mash them together and you get a fact boy's awful pronunciation. You're welcome. Number 88. Kaplan International, an education company that specialises in teaching languages, found that 6% of people learning English use How I Met Your Mother to help them learn the lingo. 7% used The Simpsons, and a whopping 26% opted for Friends as their tool of choice. Number 89. The show has provided endless gifts, but what about the memes, I hear you ask? The memes. Well, the biggest one, based on the show, is the True Story Rage comic character and catchphrase, which are both modelled on Barney. Number 90. There are four published books based on the show and written by Barney Stinson. The Bro Code, The Playbook Suit Up, Score Chicks, Be Awesome, Bro on the Go, and Bro Code for Parents. What to expect when you're awesome. Of course, they weren't actually written by Barney, since, I'm sorry to say it, guys, he's a fictional character. The books were actually penned by How I Met Your Mother writer Matt Kahn. Number 91. Hannigan and Sagat go way back. When she was younger, Hannigan used to babysit Bob's kids. Apparently, she did this for two years. I mean, not full time, that would be mental, but even so, nice, nice factoid. Number 92. According to Neil Patrick Harris, Barney gets a bad rap. In an interview with Digital Spy, he said that he thinks that Ted made him sound extra sleazy on purpose when telling his stories to his kids so that they wouldn't look badly on their father for falling in love with Barney's wife, Robin. Number 93. Speaking of which, the Barney and Robin romance wasn't even on the cards for the show's creators. MPH said in an interview with the fan carpet, whatever that is, that he'd been actively pushing for that story arc for years before Baze and Thomas gave in. Number 94. Now, we all know about Siegel's smoking habit. I mean, I literally just told you about a millisecond ago. But knowing how much Alison Hannigan hated it, he did his best to stop it. They had a bet where every time he smoked, he'd owe her $10. He owed her $200, and that was on the first day of filming. Number 95. Co-creator Baze lives in New York City with his wife, Denise Cox Baze, and their three children, Pippa, Georgina, and Jack. Portrayed here by stock footage people because we can't use their images. Pippa appeared at the end of Season 7's Trilogy Time, and Georgina did as Baby Penny at the end of Unpause in Season 9. 
Number 96. On November the 1st, 2013, while the final season of the show was airing, co-creator Craig Thomas was at LA International Airport when a gunman opened fire in the terminal. He tweeted he had to run for his life and that the gunman's rifle landed just 40 feet from where he was sitting. Number 97. Neil Patrick Harris drank so much Red Bull on and off set that the company actually gave him a lifetime supply of the Happy Buzzy Energy Juice. How do I get a sponsorship? Give me that caffeine! Number 98. After same-sex marriage was legalised in New York in 2011, MPH and his secret fiancé David Burtka announced their engagement. In 2014, they were married in Italy by director Pam Fryman. Elton John performed at the reception too. Fancy! Number 99. Harris and Siegel are both big fans of the musical Les Miserables, or as some people say it, Les Miserables. When shooting the show, the pair would sometimes duet as Jean Valjean and Javert in the confrontation. It's intense, and there are clips of this thing on the internet. Number 100. The show has been having a bit of a resurgence recently, with the actors speaking out about their experiences. Actress Sarah Chalk said that even now, almost 10 years since she was on the show, she still gets angry fans yelling at her for how her character Stella treated Ted, which is ridiculous because she's not a real person. Oh look, it's number 101! Kirby Smulders has also brought back the legendary Robin Sparkles during the 2020 COVID crisis by covering her classic hit Let's Go to the Mall with a unique quarantine twist. Quarantine twist. So that was 101 facts about how I met your mother. The show, not actually how I met your mum. That is not suitable for YouTube. Do you love the show? Do you hate the show? I mean, you watched the end, so I assume you loved it. Let me know in the comments down below. Also, let me know what you want to see next on 101 facts. In the meantime, though, give this video a like. You know where it is, just down there. And subscribe to 101 facts if you haven't done so already because it's where all the cool kids hang out, baby. Ah, yeah. In the meantime, though, look at that. Two videos on screen, specially chosen for you. One's going to make your day, and the other's going to make your year. Which one's which? Only one way to find out. I'll see you there. Bye.